Hello everyone and welcome back to my next deck guide. I have a syndicate deck for you and we will be looking to use King of Beggars, the new card in this deck. Um, I haven't tried it yet until now so it's been pretty interesting for me to see how it works and the card provides a lot of great value and we'll be looking to exploit it in this Passiflora based deck that we have spawning a number of Slicer Ductresses um, as some of the options that we have to run with here. So it is a Devotion deck. I mean, um, there's not really a massive payoff with it. We're not, it's it's not like super necessary to have Devotion, but I, I wanted to add in Horson Jr. And he works better under the Devotion condition. We do have Jax. A benefit of having Devotion is that we get the final transformation. And in the transformation, Jax is a Veiled unit, so it does have protection from locks and poisons. So we do get some benefit out of running a Devotion deck, but it's not entirely necessary if you want to alter this list uh, by all means. So for our leader ability, we're using Hidden Cachet. This allows us to gain three coins at the beginning of the round. We get to refresh this ability. Um, hordes require two less coins to trigger. So any card with a Horde tag it could be the Peaches, it could be Sewer Raiders, it could be Redanian, etc. We've got a number of Horde cards to synergize with our leader, basically meaning that we can play them for a cheaper um, price than usual if you weren't playing this leader ability. Um, our stratagem that we have to work with here is Tiger's Eye. It allows us to gain five coins. Tiger's Eye is nice when going first. Um, you can go ahead and click that. Click leader ability, and you know we get to pull out flying Redanian right away, and also we get to have a good condition for Soul to ensure Horde Seven, which is what he'll be operating on in order to boost by three. So it just gets Soul right up there when we're going first. A strong engine piece down on the board. If your opponents aren't paying attention to the score, you could catch them off guard, and they could lose on even sometimes. But enough with the um, getting into those cards. We're going to get into this deck from the bottom up. And I'm going to explain how best to play each card and when to play it, alright? So to begin with, we do have some control options in this deck. We have Poisons, we've got Horsun Jr, we've got Philippa. Uh, with a Fist Tech Trafficker, it's nice because we could either use it to destroy an opponent's unit or we could just use it for some coins if we need some to activate some of our tribute units. So use this as you need to. And when you play Fist Tech Trafficker, it's nice because it can synergize with Fist Tech itself if you didn't get the other copy or vice versa, all right? So it's good that we've got multiple ways to deliver poison and either destroy a unit or gain coins on our own. <laughs> Next up, we've got the Passive Flora Peaches. On Horde 4, at the end of your turn, boost off by 1. Keep in mind, uh, because of our leader ability, it's not going to be Horde 4. It's going to be lower than that, right? With the Peaches, you could go ahead and play one in the first round. Keep in mind that we need Blind Eyes units to activate the Scenario card, Passiflora. I wouldn't suggest playing all of them before Passiflora, but yeah, go ahead and play one. It could be a nice first round card for you. And then the other one you could save when you're playing the Scenario. Next up, we have two Sea Jackals. This is to help us manage coins, but not only that, working with this Horde condition, we can get a lot of great value out of playing Sea Jackal. It's gonna be boosting itself by three on Horde five. Sea Jackal, take one with you into the first round, especially when we're going first using Stratagem, Tax Collector, we can have a lot of coins. We need some ways to ensure we don't over profit. Sea Jackal is just nice to make sure we're using our coins right and not wasting them. Take one with you in the first. And the second Sea Jackal, I'd recommend you taking into the time you play Passive Flora because there's going to be a time when we get a number of coins from that scenario card. We want to be able to use them all effectively, not waste any of them. Tax Collector, very nice card to ensure that we get the sufficient funds we need to activate our tribute units and to get our hordes rolling too. We're playing this on a range draw. Every allied turn on turn end, we're just gaining a coin. Play one in the first round and you can play the other, say into the second round, if you're gonna bleed in with Passiflora. Just give you good consistent coin carryover. 
Fist tech, it gives us profit four. We get to poison a unit. If your opponent's unit's gone very tall, just poison a unit, even if it's something that's of importance to them. Go ahead and poison it. Try to keep both of these copies with, with you when you're going to play them out. Try to stay consistent with the cards that you play. Um, they're not bad if you want to take like poisons with you into the first round, perhaps. Just play as you feel. Sewer Raiders or two could summon copies of this unit from our deck to the same row. So obviously you want the other copy of this card in our deck and it's a first round card really. You always want to thin as early as possible in a match, increasing the odds of drawing the cards you want as the match goes on. Then we got the slice seductresses. They're pretty sly little things, these lasses. Uh, with V3, they get to gain a shield, which is nice, so they can get some protection. Whenever your opponent plays a unit, boost off by one. But on the bonded condition, whenever your opponent plays a card, boost off by one. So it could be any card. So Sly Seductresses can really pay off well for you, where your opponent um, plays into multiple cards from the one card. Like they do a ton of thinning, like Simlas, for example. Like they play Simlas into Bountiful Harvest and then they generate cards. Like the Sly Seductresses would really be popping off at those kinds of times. But we are looking to play these with the Scenario card. And the way we're going to play this is we're going to try to push to win round one. And then we want to go into round two and go for a bleed with the scenario card and these cards. Um, it just makes more sense. They're a little bit more awkward to play in short rounds because they depend on our opponent playing a card to get value. So yeah, they're more of a second round card when you're pushing in or resisting a bleed. All right. And we want to have both of them down at the same time and have them synergize with Adriano the Mink spawning another. I do have Kalkstein in this deck as a purifier. It is a blind eye, so it could offer you some flexibility in activating the scenario card. It gives us profit two, which isn't too bad as well. Get some coins. So fee two, purify unit. So the interesting thing about Kalkstein is that he can consistently purify units across the board, which is amazing. There's no other purifier really like that in the game that has that kind of ability. You can keep clicking it and purifying multiple units, all right? There is one that can purify the whole entire board one off, but this is just consistently targeting units if it likes. You could purify resilience units, get rid of that status so they don't carry over. You could purify defenders. You could purify poison, locks, bleeding, whatever works for a match. Um, yeah, so kind of take him in as he is relevant to a match. If you think he's not relevant, uh, perhaps use him for a dry pass or push him away in your deck. Soul is a great first round card, guys. Like I said, with Tax Collector, using our stratagem, gaining five coins, using leader ability, we are more than easily going to get Horde 7, which what will be needed under our leader ability condition to have him boosting by three. Gives us a lot of good comfort in the first round to secure a victory. Just bear in mind though, the only thing is that he can go really tall and be an easy target for tall punish. But at the same time, you could use Salt to bait out your opponent's tall removal, which is nice too, like Yennefer, Heat Wave, something of that nature. If you think there's a risk that you could go down, um, you know, losing on even, just pass before he gets too chunky and too much of an easy target. Adriano the Mink, he gives us profit too, but we get to increase that for every allied Slice Seductress. Therefore, it makes sense that we're going to play all the Slice Seductresses first before playing the Mink. On Tribute 5, five we're spawning another Slice Seductress in his row. We're going to look to play the Mink and the Slice Seductresses all together with Scenario Card when we're pushing in for a bleed into round 2, most preferably. Flying Redanian is nice because it gives us consistent carryover as long as we have Horde 7. On turn N, summon this unit from your deck or graveyard to a random allied row. So there's a bit of thinning in our deck. And as I said, it's going to be coming from our graveyard to the board whenever we have 7 coins in pouch on a pass. Svola, I really like the artwork for this card. looks great. Um, it's seeing a lot of play now because of King of Beggars. It just makes it really easy to pull King of Beggars. Um, all you have to do is pay this tribute and it thins that card out, get a lot of excellent value. So yeah, we're kind of using this in combination just to give some tribute consistency for King of Beggars in our deck. It gives us profit too on tribute nine. 
we're spawning the Savol's Frightener, which is this here. So I place for some pretty good points. And um, I would say we're looking to use Savola in a short round three. If we could push our opponent in round two, get something good out of them, pass, then go on a short round three with Savola, it'd be really nice. Okay. So all you have to do really is just make sure you've got enough profit to play Savola. Uh, we do have Bank. This is just for access in our deck. We don't have anything like a Neuromancy. So I have this in place. It gives us profit three. Basically allows us to look in our deck and play a card. And then we're going to spend a coin according to how far the card is from the beginning of what we're seeing in our deck. All right. Then we have Philippa for some extra control here. Deploy, spend a number of coins equal to an enemy unit's power, then seize it. Philippa's pretty nice to have because remember it seizes your opponent's unit. So if you've got opponents who are going to try to use their unit later on, like a Crow Mother, um, it could be Maddock, any of those kinds of cards, even in Skellige, you know, they've got some cards that they like to replay from the graveyard. Anything like that that you think they could use again, just go ahead and seize it so they don't have that potential combination for later. So use this flexibly. I mean, I've taken Melusine with Philippa before. I think that place was some pretty good value. Or if you want to seize a defender, give your engine pieces some protection. That could be an option too. Hefty Helge, I'm starting to see that now with some enslaved decks. Yeah, just save it for when you think it's right to play, but use it wisely. King of Beggars, I think it's a fantastic card, plays for a lot of value. Not only is it a spender on fee one, boosts off by one, so it can help us manage our coins out. It thins out from the deck. Um, while in deck, whenever you pay a tribute, move a counter for each coin paid, and for each remove counter, gain one coin back. So you're paying tributes until this comes out and you're getting that money back for whatever tribute you're paying, which is insane. And then, yeah, when the counter reaches zero, it just summons itself from the deck to a random allied row. So the counter is nine, right? So basically what that means is like, if we just use Savola's tribute, tribute nine, obviously that removes the complete counter and then King of Beggars gets thinned out right away. But we do have some other tribute cards such as Mink. He wouldn't come out if we just played Mink on his own. But if we played Mink, which is tribute five, and then we played Jax, which is tribute four, that would thin him out too. Just keep that in mind if you'd like to do that. Basically, we always want to keep King of Beggars in deck and never have it in hand as much as possible. Horson Jr. for some control. Because we're Devotion, we get to damage any enemy unit instead of a boosted one. Uh, on fee three, destroy an enemy unit with three power or less. So this could work good against ST with the Whisperer units, the three powered ones that duplicate themselves or anything else that you could come up with uh, for that matter. But yeah, just some nice control. Six points of damage is feels pretty good. Jax, giving us profit four. On tribute four, we get to spawn two Flaming Rose Footmen in the same row and he's a spender. As I said, because we're a Devotion deck, he's got the Veil Tag, extra protection, it's pretty nice. But yeah, I mean, his added condition of the Firesworn card that you see here, that's little consequence for us. We're not playing Firesworn. So like I said, it's not super necessary to go Devotion like I have here. But yeah, feel free to adjust the deck as you want. Passive Flora, pretty strong um, round of play for us, this card. It's gonna progress when we play a Blind Eyes unit. And for the Blind Eyes units that we have, in particular, we're looking to actually use these two that are listed here on the card. These are the ones that are going to get spawned as we play through. And just remember, we get we get to gain six coins. So you want to take a Sea Jackal with you before you go ahead and really play this whole chapter out, all right? Just to manage the coins. This you're going to look to use in round two. Push in with Passive Flora, bleed your opponent, Play your slice of Ductresses, your Peaches, get the passive points going, and then pass under some good pressure. Okay, my friends, so this is the deck, King of Beggars, Devotion list. Have fun with it. Let me know how you go. Don't really need the Seductress in the first. These are good to kind of hold on to. We could come back around to these. Sea <clears throat> Jackal to manage profit. 
Maybe we put a poison away. Uh, we got the boat. That's really uh, unfortunate to pull this. Anyway, uh, we're going to go like this. And we're going to go ahead and try to find a tax collector. Yep, second card, great. That's always good to start off with. Spend Xmas with family. Need to rest a bit. Ah, oh, I see. Five days. So Yaga refuel me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't really play Yaga much, or uh, I'm sure he'd request that from me. Yeah, when I play monsters, I'm usually going like Fruits of Easegeth decks or Vampires lately. Oh yeah, you play Yaga a lot? Why am I not surprised? Played a beat with me. I uh, appreciate it. I, I hope you uh, consumed a lot of sorry souls with it. <laughs> Uh, okay. Starting off like this. Yeah, this isn't bad here now. We could go see Jackal next. Overwhelming hunger, vampires, non devotion. Like, you're using overwhelming hunger for vamps? That's really interesting to hear. It's not really a combo. Ah, right. The one that Bushy played. I saw his video. Ah, uh, yeah. Does it play good, you think? What are your thoughts on it? I saw the video, I just... Uh, what is it? Devo Non-devotion, though. If it was devotion, it would be insane, man. Interesting. So, good win ratio. You tweaked it. Yep, yep. Making a bomb. We could seize Madoc um, with Philippa. That ain't bad either. This is going to take away a lot of value from them. We could get into it like that. Add an operator to Fletter. Oh yeah, I heard about that combo. Hey HK, what's up man? Excellent beard. It's literally growing on me, bro. Uh, I was trying to go get a haircut over the weekend, but family barbecues and stuff didn't get the time. Yeah, how you been though, man? You got a pretty solid beard yourself. Ah, it's good to hear that it's winning, dude. That's great. Uh, let's go out and thin. <clears throat> Still getting good coins here. Yeah, I guess you got to play it in a very specific way. I didn't really get into the Arrakis Queen too much. But yeah, I can see the benefit in it. Like, you can spawn so many good units, you can just keep duplicating them. And especially that other card that got that buff. Um, it can trigger gold Deathwish units, not just bronzes anymore. What was it called? Abaya or something like that? That's a, that's a pretty good um, addition to monsters too. Yeah, that's the one I buy her. Yep. That's pretty much everyone plays Arrakis Queen. They play it with that card. The Maddox plays are pretty crazy too. Jam 26 games of Invigorate. <laughs> yeah, I saw your messages, man. I'm really happy for you that you've made it back to pro, yeah? That's awesome. Face Maddox with Arrakis and Ancient Foglet. That's a pretty interesting combo too. Uh, they're pushing a bit here, but we do have Sea Jackal. Some points. Should click leader now. I wonder if they got tall punish for this though. Anyway, we'll spend in a bit to get out of this. bunch of monsters that boost when consumed um vran vran warrior is it called that lizard looking one that was an insane deck i versed that one you're talking about that's crazy <laughs> that really pops off if you don't have control and they just spread those units out over a long round it's nuts 
It's really crazy. Lock. All right. Uh, that's a bit unfortunate. We don't have access for a spender, but you know, boat enhanced. That just really sucks for us here. I mean, I could play this out too. They're going to be playing a lot of control. Maybe I'm passing here. Double played Morkfarg to win. Host Pirates. Oh, so you play Pirates too. Uh, what did you use to double play it? Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you brought it back from the graveyard. I don't really play that card at all. When I see like a lot of cards get repetitively played, I kind of stay away from them. <laughs> I'm more interested in trying things that haven't been done really, you know? So you don't really see me playing. That's why I don't play meta too much too. I just like to try different things. <laughs> That's what keeps the game interesting for me. Hey, poster boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm back, I'm back. It's been a while, man. I don't think I caught you on my last stream that I had. I did have one stream before this one. But yeah, I remember a while back, I caught you on that day when I was trying to stream. It was horrific. <laughs> my internet was so bad, dude. I felt really bad for you because like you kept waiting for me. <laughs> but it wasn't happening. But yeah, all's good now. Back to my streaming schedule. Putting provision, it's still get getting played. Yeah, I still still see it played a lot too myself. So this person's gonna do Alzor, aren't they? <clears throat> Alright. Even when it's at 15 provision, you think? <laughs> This is an interesting um, bleed, isn't it? They don't really have a target and they've gone ahead and um, played this out. Anyhow, we can play this and we'll thin boat out. Really a one power nerf would kill it. Same as what happened to wild boar. Three power is too good. Yeah, that's true as well. Wild Boar's a great card too. Wild Boar of the Sea, yep. Yeah, no worries, OBS. All good, my friend. Catch you when you come back. So, yep. Let's see what our opponent's up to here. Playing this uh, with no targets on the board's a bit unusual. But maybe they've got a lot of points they can generate. They're confident to do it. I definitely wanted to keep um, Junior for some control. Just got a feeling he's going to come in handy now. Four powers, auto include, and at three. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. Not so bad for you back then, but also for myself. Oh, yeah, that's true. I remember, I remember. Yeah, I was just trying to put together a, uh, <laughs> a deck guide for the Warriors. It wasn't happening, man. They were really fun matches, too. Uh, okay, so we actually got this out here on the board. So what we could do is go... We just want to kill this, really. Just get it out of our life. He does need units. Froth. I don't know if I want to spend on that though. Maybe I could. I might hold it. I'm trying to think of like if we're going to play into this too though. Because I got Mink. 
I need some coins. They've got no orbs in graveyard. I think they blew them first round. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, we could just play this. Wait, if they're playing bombs, could they have haze? Maybe I'll just try to play around that. We'll just do this. Oh, really, H? Wow, that's pretty expensive. <laughs> They blew all the orbs already. That's great for us, man. <laughs> That's the biggest pain versing this deck. So yeah, I'd like to play this first and then playing Mink next is nice because we get extra profit because of the Seductress on the board. Gets closer to triggering um, Beggars as well. Wow. Well, well, it was in consideration to keep sun for that too but you know we got rid of their other important card milva i'll play it here Threes gain a shield. I mean, we could even rely on Savola to get us out of this. I don't really know how far they're going into it. Savola would definitely pull out um, King of Beggars. And then we got Passive Flora for a short round. Hopefully they don't get anything good with the high rolls. Oh my goodness. She who knows, he for real. Oh man. That's insane, dude. <laughs> oh, asteroid, I know way. I was just hoping, you know? Uh, so if I spend two. Well, I'm actually going to be under profit for this if I play that. I might play this now. I've got Sea Jackal if I need a spender. I could just leave that there. Maybe we can save a bit of coins. Yeah, post the boy. I know. I wasn't. Ex I wasn't expecting that. I was hoping for something less, but then again, they're playing a Neuromancy. I'd like to keep this to activate Passive Flora for the next. Hopefully, this should do it for us. We're going all out. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna play everything. Uh, what we can do is go this. It's been a long, hard road, hasn't it? So this is gonna give us six coins next. If I pass, still not enough. Now it's good. All right. So we got a bit of coin carryover, but we did have to spend big. But so did they, you know, we got Gord out, we got Alzor out, but they got she who knows up the back. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we've pretty much blown all our cards except for this. Maybe poisons is the way to go. Yeah, I know. 10 point carryover, yeah. 
Yeah. It's just gonna be this. It's just got a bit of control and we got jacks. They've spent heat wave, haven't they? Ah, uh, what can we do? Good on them, you know, they pulled well. Definitely. Definitely did very well. That's our only spender as well, so... They get rid of that. Poison first. Um, not necessarily in a rush to do it. Good thing is they're not going for this. Could just go for it now. Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe it was better to go poison first. Maybe it would have protected that unit a bit more. The consideration, yeah. Making a bomb? Trying to kill it down? How many of those has he played? He's played two. Got to go all out in jacks here. Let's see if we've got it. Last card is... Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, man. We, we bet that still. That feels great. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. Okay. In this world, only two things are certain. Yeah, we got C Jackal for a spender, that's good. Let's just go ahead and get boat up. It's alright. It happens, guys. Mistakes in Gwent happens. I make mistakes too sometimes. Just got to live and learn, you know? Don't beat yourself up about it. Just stay focused. Even if you screw up bad, just keep playing on. You'll turn it around. Coin management time. So Soul's really good when we go first because we get a lot of coins fast with the stratagem that we have. Usually a good first round card for us. But we've got other plays, that's all good. Oh, very interesting indeed. They're looking to generate some profit apparently. It's um, unusual to see. We do have the condition to play this out, so let's do it. So like we said, we're going to bleed with Passiflora. That's what we're going to try to do. Oh, it actually hit it. Well done. Great work. Could go for some passive points. But 
What do they got? Coated weapons. What do they want to do? At least they're going to lose this profit as they carry on. And they don't really have a way of gaining more. Why was I expecting that to happen? <laughs> ah, damn it. This is exactly what happened to me last Enslaved 5 match. They use leader in the first. Okay. <laughs> Slow angel. Well, you could have tall punish for that too. Hopefully they don't have anything for it. Uh, these enslaved matchups. Challenging, challenging. Exact same thing happened. I lost on 5 cards though. Lost on even. On the last match. Because I used leader in the first. Taking their time though. Not sure what they're looking to do. Is that enough points? Oh, we just get out of it, guys. We have to get out of here. It's way too close. They're really going for coins. Damn. <laughs> That's worrying me. They got more coins than us. We're hidden cachet. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> I've got to contact CDPR about this. I'm not happy, man. Other factions playing better than our own deck. Okay. Pretty nice hand, really. I could roll with that. Bender. To be showered with imperial gold. <laughs> Hefty Helge. Yep. We don't have Purify. We could have got through Defender otherwise. I'm over profiting by a coin if I play this. How are we going to manage our coins? This? This could help manage them too, I guess. This is just very dangerous. It's just going to be getting so many charges of damage as we play on though. As long as they have enough tactics, but they're not a really heavy tactic deck like Enslave 6. So they're 5.
Breeds. Whose deck is this? I've been seeing this a few times now. Nice. They could have treason. At the same time, assassination. Not seen that deck before. Very interesting. Yeah, this is the second time I versed it, so I'm not sure who this is. People are desperate to make Rinse great. <laughs> Has that become a thing lately now? They want to play this card more. I haven't played it much myself. Yeah, this is like the exact deck I was just versing before. That's interesting that he put that back up. Could go for coins now. Why not? Could go slice a duck dress. Ah, that's why. See, they're not... But the tactic synergy isn't really there for Helge, is it? Have you seen? It's just been staying there. It hasn't been really gaining charges. So... That's something to consider when playing this card. That's that's why I'd like to, to just go as hard as possible. That's why I go on Slave 6 when playing this. Uh, if I click this, these aren't gonna boost. Everyone doing this. Bribery? Well, he still can't kill it, because it's gonna go to... F oh no, wait, he can. Yeah, because it's not a unit. So he kills this now? Or does it go up by one point? Oh, he seizes it. Interesting. Kills that. We're gonna have to play this out. Maybe it's the Vola next. Yeah, I think it's going to be Savola. Well, actually... Profit 4. Hmm... Just thinking what's the best play here. Savola or Jax? Take no prisoners! No prisoners! I don't think we want this now. Jeez. 
I played Reince in the clog deck recently, quite entertaining. Oh, nice to see. I have been seeing a bit of clog come up too, um, but more Colgrim kind of style. But that's cool. And thanks very much for the follow as well. Appreciate it. So this just gives us profit. Well, it could give us access to remove something too. Maybe I'm just doing this first. Thanks for the psychological videos, very useful. Ah, oh, well thank you for watching them. Nice to see you like those too. Yeah, I just put one out on anger management recently. I just released it yesterday. So I hope you like that one too. It's definitely something I enjoy on the side, in addition to Gwent. That's not much at all. Very good sign for us. Goes for that. So if he's going for that, that means they have something to deal with this, right? They've got Yennefer Invocation, I think. Why would, why would you damage that unit if it's got armor? That's what I think it is. So we probably shouldn't... Well, we've got Siege Jackal too. Let's go this. Um, how much would this boost by? Boost by two. Still okay here. Yeah, I think it is Dex. I think it's Yennefer Invocation. So we've got to keep that in mind. We don't want to go too chunky into one. Anyway, we wouldn't because we've got Sea Jackal. We're going to spread our points around here. I'm just not really sure about Philippa. Maybe it'll be a final play for us. And I think they've got Treason too, don't they? The last... The last NG deck that I've had Treason. So I've got to be really careful about that here. Let's just keep our boosting up there. It's looking good though. It's looking good for us. I think it should be alright. They're just going to take this with the NFR probably. Hey, Rithwick, what's up, man? Welcome. If you guys that don't know Rithwick, he streams. Go check him out. Solid streamer. There it is. Yes, yes. We'll just leave him here like that. Too kind as always. How are the holidays? Yeah, quite good, thank you. Holidays are going great. Having a very good time. Hope you are as well. Hope you're staying safe with your family. Um, so let's just go... Like this. Guess we'll just go for the tallest.
It's gonna take either one of these out anyway. I don't think I'm gonna go all into that. Nah, I'm just gonna leave it. Because I'm sure he's got tall punish for last card. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we got it. Nice, nice. GG, my friends. Victorious. And we're going first. I can already see two cards we don't want in hand right now. Or ever, really. <laughs> we never want beggars in hand or that damn boat. And we don't want to see double this either. Other cards look pretty good, though. Let's go ahead and pull boat out. Uh, Raiders. Wonder if they've got Bran in this deck. Should I click it again? Yeah, I think we'll click it twice. Oh, great sword. Wow. We got one leader charge already. They really mean business here. Little do they know we've got another tax individual over here collecting coin for us. Next will be Soul. I think it's a good play next. And we've got the Horde 7 condition. Ah, they're really pushing hard here. Well done, my friend. I like it, I like it. Yeah, I guess we can just play it here. Sewer Raiders would be a next play. Good points with Soul. He's great. Only thing is, you're going real chunky into one unit. If they got Tall Punish, quite risky. So sometimes you got to think of passing before they can kind of take that option. Got Fist Tech as well. This card ain't too bad either, hey? Poor provision cost. War Cryer. Guess it can be nice as long as your opponent doesn't have too much boosting going on. They just make it. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was looking at the points then I was like, they stuffed that up. Uh, that was good calculation. Oh, we don't want you here. Well, at least we've done our thinning in the first round. They'd probably want a long round, wouldn't they, if they've got veteran units? Makes more sense for the value they get. You know, their base power increases as they play on. That's how I'd play it anyway. But then again, if you've got Bran, so much better playing them now. I don't really know if we need a Purify here. Maybe we're just... Sorry, I got a bit carried away. Just probably putting that out there. 
Ooh, could be, yeah. <laughs> they don't have him. <laughs> it could be, you're right, yeah. I was thinking more about defenders and then playing like that, but... Yeah, if, if they have that... <laughs> that could be an issue, eh? You know, but then again, if they play it onto one of these units, we could give it a shield. But if they do it on anything else, yeah, it's not good. Why didn't you tell me earlier, H? Come on, man. Alright, let's have a look. No, we don't want to start like that. Let's get bowed up. All the Xmas meat has me slow. <laughs> me too, man. Me too. I had a big barbecue the other day. It was nice. I had prawns, lamb, goat, you name it, dude. But yeah, that's that's what this time's all about, man. Eat up. You love lamb? Yeah, it's it's great. Especially when the people know how to cook it, right? <laughs> uh, this could be a good horse on target. We can manage our coins. <laughs> Slow, ain't ya? Uh, it sucks how uh, they didn't... They should have killed this. It would have been better for us. <clears throat> We could draw it back, you know, with our coins. I only loot corpses, except sometimes they're quite fresh. What are we looking into deck for? We got Philippa, we got Jax, so J Jax is great. But we're getting six coins next. Six coins. Six coins from scenario. Hjalma, you think? Yeah, that's a great card to have. Oh wow. Must be made. Guess for that. Children, elders, we spare none. <laughs> Are they looking for bloodthirst or what? I'm trying to figure out why they're playing like this. It's probably not a good idea for me to to dump my coins into this, eh? Uh, okay, go this. I'll try to avoid um, brain damage, so I'll stack melee. Double raiders. Uh, we've got to spread our coins around a bit now. I guess it doesn't even matter which one I play first, like Peach or Seductress. Any diamonds for little old me? They can't exactly kill it right away with those two on the board. So that's a good thing for us.
Should be this next, shouldn't it? Five coins. At least we get more profit um, having the seductresses down with mink. It's really nice. Like, we just got plenty of them here. Yeah, Bond's great, man. It is. Look at that. That's really nice. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this one now. Nothing tickles my tits quite like a good secret. I think I'm leaving it like that. That's interesting. He's going for that. Goes Blood Eagle onto it or something. Bear Witcher. Interesting seeing these cards get played here. We've got a ton of profit coming up now. Um, so it's going to be profit two. Let's do this. And we must save the remaining coins for Zavola. Has to be. So next play would be Peaches. But that's great having those bonded units down. So we have armor. We have shield here for this to damage. Hopefully it hits something good for us. Even hitting that would be good. We could get it back. Oh, actually not not after we play this, but yeah, would have been good earlier. Ah, there it is. Damn H. <laughs> H called it, man. He did. Yeah, he called it. Nothing I could do really there. I wanna see corpses. Corpses everywhere. Anyway, we still got the slice seductresses boosting as well. King Bran, yeah. Oh wow. Oh nice weird. <laughs> <laughs> 